And I think it's probably not unexpected, although it's still a very pleasant surprise. Mm. Um, we know that negotiations have been underway in all sorts of forms. Um, some months ago, President Biden said that uh, when he was asked whether that he was uh, going to release Julian Assange, he said, we're considering it. And I think that was the first indication that the Americans were seriously looking at some kind of agreement. But, uh, you know, this has still come as as as, as something of a surprise. Um, every, we've had so many false starts that mm. nobody really believed it was going to happen until it actually did happen. Yeah, that's right. And can you tell us about this deal? Is it a good compromise for all? Uh, I'm not sure that it's a good compromise. I think that everyone involved will probably be frustrated to, to a certain extent. Um, Julian Assange's critics will have wanted him to serve prison. They will have wanted something much more substantial than, than a fairly token guilty plea to one single charge under the Espionage Act. And, and I'm pretty sure that Julian Assange and his lawyers will always say that he's not guilty of anything and didn't do anything wrong. But this is the kind of deal that I think everyone, if they're not happy with, could at least live with. Um, I think the Assange camp would have recognised that there was really no alternative, that the parties both in the United States and I think to, to a certain extent the United Kingdom had also painted themselves into a corner where there was no real option but to see some kind of some kind of guilty plea. I don't think President Biden was ever going, or the Biden administration was ever going to drop the charges entirely, particularly coming up to a very important election. Mm. Um, and that, because that would have been seen to be weak on security in some form. But I, but equally, I don't think anyone wanted this to go to trial and, and um, for all of the messy politics surrounding it to, to bubble up. So, so yes, I think this is, as I said, something that no, no one was particularly happy with, but everyone could, could live with. And Peter, you spent time in an Egyptian prison, of course. Can you give us some insight into some of what Julian Assange may be feeling today? <laughs> um, I, I think right. I think that he's he's going to be feeling really quite discombobulated. Um, you, you know, there's a there's this weird mix of of joy and elation, um, and a certain degree of confusion and disorientation. Uh, Julian, you know, I only spent 13 months in prison, 400 days. Julian has spent uh, closer to 13 years. Mm -hmm. Um, and his experience has been far more odious than, than anything I went through. But I also know just how strange it was to go from incarceration, which is designed to mess with your head. Fundamentally, it's a form of psychological pressure, psychological torture. And so you can't go through that experience, particularly with the degree of uncertainty that Julian has experienced in this whole in this whole ordeal, and then come out the other side and just pop straight back into into normal life as if nothing had happened. Um, it's going to be a very, very difficult transition for him, I think. Mm. We know that his time behind bars has taken its toll on his health. He hasn't been well. And I know you've said that the journey home, it's going to be much longer than the flight back to Australia. Yeah, that's right. Um, it's going to be a slow process of reconnecting with his family and his, and, and his loved ones. Um, he's got his children so, um, who've, who've really never known him other than as as a prisoner um, so there'll be a lot of connecting to be done a lot of reconnecting with his wife Stella um, and his family his father John Shipton and his and his brother who've all been tirelessly campaigning for his release um, there will be a lot of attention from the media from the public wanting to hear from him um, and a whole bunch of unresolved legal issues I suspect to, to deal with so it's going to be a fairly long, slow and difficult process. And 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 he will need to acknowledge, pretty sure that he already has acknowledged, the kind of psychological pressure that he's been under and the work that that's going to take to undo. Now, this deal, Peter, if we can go back to it, where Assange is pleading guilty to that charge, it sets him free, of course. It satisfies diplomatic and humanitarian aims. What about legally and philosophically, though? What does it mean for free speech and journalism? Uh, we're going to have to wait and see how that guilty plea pans out. But I think there are a couple of things to be said. First of all, this is um, previous US administrations, and in particular um, Barack Obama, surprisingly, have been incredibly aggressive about using the Espionage Act to go after journalist sources. And although it's impossible to quantify the stories that haven't been told, I think it's indisputable that it will have had a chilling effect on those sources and therefore public interest journalism. But this is the first time that um, any publisher has been has been has, has has been forced to plead guilty under the Espionage Act. 
And regardless of what you think about Julian as a journalist or not, um, I think the implications of this case for journalism are very, very serious. Um, President Obama, for all of his aggression in going after journalist sources, uh, decided against prosecuting Julian Assange because he and his administration recognized that if they did that, it would be very, very difficult not to go after uh, the, the big made, the big publishers, the big news organizations such as the New York Times and the Washington Post. And, and so I'm, it, it is worrying uh, to see that Julian has been forced to plead guilty and to see that there is now a precedent. It's not clear to me at this point how that precedent may or may not be used. But we know that when uh, leaders with authori authoritarian tendencies get in power, they tend to use all of the levers that they have to prosecute, to go after any any critics. And I think that um, that plea will be worrying for anyone who's concerned about uh, the free press in the United States. And in fact, anyone who, who is outside the US, because of course, Julian wasn't a US citizen. He wasn't in, in the US at the time. And so any uh, in, international journalists who are doing similar work will also be very, very worried. Yeah, and Peter, I know you've struggled with the question of journalism in this case. It is a complex one. But you say that WikiLeaks it was doing what the First Amendment to the US Constitution was designed to achieve, that guaranteeing freedom of speech, press freedom, and in the process, granting people the right to speak out against abuses of government authority. Yeah, that's right. Um, the First Amendment is considered by a lot of people to be the gold standard when it comes to defending press freedom and freedom of the speech. Um, it's been used in, in countless court cases to, to defend all sorts of um, all sorts of, of things that have been published that governments have tried, gov U.S. governments have tried to suppress. Um, and I think in this case we should be celebrating um, the fact that uh, well we should be acknowledging the importance of what WikiLeaks did. Um, I, it's difficult to celebrate it given the fact that Julian's been forced to plead guilty under the, under those circumstances. But you know I think. The point is that at one level, in my view, um, the who is is less of a less of an issue than the how. Um, just because someone puts something online doesn't make them a journalist. Um, if that were the case, anyone with a with a social media account would consider could call themselves a journalist. And I don't think that's that's the case. I think that's undermining what journalism is. Journalism is a process, an organised process for gathering, organising and presenting information in line with a set of professional ethical standards and processes. I'm not convinced that WikiLeaks made that standard, but that is not to, under, to, to diminish the importance, the significance of what WikiLeaks published um, and the way it exposed all sorts of evidence of some very, very serious abuses of power and authority by the United States.